I'm in Webster Groves. Oh, you're stuck in traffic? Or are you staying well, there? I, or? No, I've, I got back home, but uh, okay. a lot of flooding out there. All right, good. So you're home, safe and sound. I don't have to worry about you. That's right. All right, good. So let's start with the first, the the bigger of the, of the uh, well, let's start with, with two of them. Give us, a, g- these were both approved, and they're going to be on the ballot. So um, we're going to vote on these two. One, uh, the bigger one is how much, uh, how much uh, per pack a tax? Well, it- Right. It, it, the, the base amount is $0.60 cents per pack. That is phased in over some time. Uh, but for certain cigarettes, it can be as high as, uh, let's see, $1.27 per, per pack. So it's, um, it can be quite high. And at that level, you're talking about an increase of about 750%. So it's a substantial tax increase. It'll be the largest tax increase in Missouri history uh, approved uh, by voters. Okay. So, and, and, so, and, and the other one is what? And what? Uh, it, it is a smaller tax. It is twenty three cents per pack. Okay. Now let's take the larger one first. Right. Am I accurate by saying it is funded by Big Tobacco? Uh, that is the case. Uh, it has been almost exclusively funded by uh, RJR, which is uh, the Reynolds Tobacco Company out of uh, Winston Salem, North Carolina. So it's it is essentially uh, their proposal, and um, they have fully funded it. They put three million dollars into it to date. They've announced another five million dollars they're going to put into it, which gets you to eight, which is a substantial amount of money for a statewide ballot measure. Why they've raised nickels and dimes other places, but that is the overwhelming amount of their. Why? Funding. Why? Explain to me what's going. Why are they doing this? I think there's a couple reasons. Uh, one reason is that embedded in this constitutional amendment is uh, sort of a settling of, a, of scores between small tobacco companies and large tobacco companies. It dates back to the, the big tobacco settlement of the late 90s, and some of the language in that allowed some of the smaller, newer tobacco companies to uh, come into the marketplace. And part of what this amendment does is tries to, to settle that score and to, and to uh, uh, change the change the competitive playing field. The other thing it does, though, there are lots of tobacco industry goodies in this measure. Things like banning research into harmful impacts of smoking with any of this money. Things like limiting enforcement, uh, rebates to tobacco companies for just collect. Essentially, when they pay the tax, they get three percent back just for just for sending their check to the government. So there are a number of tobacco tax goodies in here for them. Uh, there's also a gag order on any public health officials if, if you're for example, the St. Louis County Health Department, and you receive some money under this proposal, you basically have a gag order in place on you that you can't advocate for stricter tobacco laws. So there's lots of goodies in here for the tobacco companies. Uh, pretty. <laughs> so, so the tobacco companies are saying, look, we'll, we'll put a t- tax on, uh, on our product, but, right. but in, because of that, we'll get everything else we, we, we've ever wanted. Yeah, it's, it's very clear they've drafted this measure. That uh, I mean, I would love to have seen the you know the track changes where it tracks through who was commenting on this piece or that piece. Um, and it's, it's very clear that they put everything they want in this measure, uh, from settling that old 1990s uh, legal score to you know to really making their life pretty pretty nice going forward. All right, let's talk about some of the monies. Uh, first of all, it's sort of confusing to me, uh, Brad Catcher, that. Uh, this this money none the, in this law if it passes the state of Missouri is no longer to study the harmful effects of tobacco. Well, if yes, yeah, if there's money that's uh, pushed out through this amendment to any government entity, then that entity cannot be studying the harmful impacts of of tobacco. And what's kind of what's really interesting about that is that, is that if the tobacco companies if more than one tobacco companies had conspired to do that amongst themselves, they would be violating this 1990 settlement. But because they've sort of done it in concert with these early childhood folks, uh, it's perfectly fine. And uh, it's, a, it's a massive overreach. It's wrong for the state of Missouri. Uh, it's wrong that this, you know, what would otherwise be a good cause of early childhood education has been hijacked by these tobacco companies. Uh, it, it, both uh, candidates for governor came out against this bill, correct? That's right. Both Coster and Greitens have came out against it. Now let's talk about the money, because the money goes, once the money is raised, the 60 cents per tax, where does the money go? Well, it goes to uh, this, this massive new bureaucratic board that's created. 
um, that's essentially appointed by bureaucrats. It's not even it's not elected officials. It's not appointed. It's not even appointed by elected officials. At least the majority of it's appointed by bureaucrats in Jefferson City. Goes into this big uh, bureaucracy and then you know gets pushed out through giveaway grants. It's not even competitively bid. There, it's unclear if there be any contractual restrictions on it as far as accountability, as far as outcomes. And, uh, you know, the money goes out and, uh, you know, you hope for the best. But there are a lot of if, if you care about fiscal oversight, there's a lot to be concerned about in this measure, whether it's the, the new board, uh, whether it's the lack of oversight through grants, whether it's the some provisions that reopen it for the legislature to tinker with the allocation of the money. There's a lot to be concerned about if you're conservative and care about fiscal oversight. A lot of people uh, complain about the lottery money that was going towards education, and that went to education, and then they took that money, uh, the rest of the money out, and put it other places. Is that the right. allegation here? I think that's a, certainly a, a, you know, a high possibility here. When the legislature can come back in and tinker with the way the, the, way the allocations are set up, when you push money out for... Uh, in unaccountable grants, without strings attached, without competitive bidding, that's that causes deep concern among folks who care about fiscal accountability. Will the money go to religious uh, schools, charter schools, things that are outside of the quote unquote public school system? It, you know, one thing this measure does is it it you know Missouri for the last hundred and almost 150 years now has had a prohibition in its constitution about public money being diverted from public education to parochial and private schools. And for the first time, what this measure does in the Constitution, where it truly matters, is it's knocking down that barrier. And it starts diverting public funds from our public schools to private and parochial schools. And a lot of folks who are concerned about education policy, people like the Missouri Rural Education Association, the Missouri Retired Teachers, the Missouri National Education Association, those groups are all very concerned about starving our public schools when they need the resources the most by diverting it to parochial and private schools. So this money does go to private schools? Yes, it does. On its face, that's part of, that is part of what it does. In fact, the, the language also talks about it can go to for-profit entities as well, which is troubling at other levels. Yeah. Um, now let's talk about stem cell for, for a second, because right. somehow stem cell funding got involved with this as well. Right. You have to wonder how, you know, you start out by drafting a measure for early childhood education and suddenly end up with stem cell research language in there. But what this measure does is it, it uh, goes in and it modifies the protections from the 2006 stem cell research and cures amendment, uh, for, you know, stigmatizing research, making it harder uh, for, uh, for research that's happening in the state to recruit doctors, to recruit researchers and just stigmatizes the research and calls into question those patient and resource protections from that 2006 amendment. And, and okay, hold on a second. Back up, back, back up a second sure. because people, sure. people are all confused. Back in 2006, sure. right. the state of Missouri passed a constitutional amendment that allowed for the use of stem cell research here in the state. That's correct. Uh, Missouri voters approved a research and cures amendment to its constitution. Okay, and you're telling me that if this passes, what happens to that amendment? Well, it, or that it, it has language in this proposal which modifies that amendment and touches that language and further stigmatizes uh, stem cell research. Uh, it makes it harder for that research to occur. Does any does any of this money go towards stem cell research? No, it, it, it doesn't. But it but by but by going in and implicating those provisions, it, it undermines them. And you have to ask yourself why. You know, if you're writing an early childhood education proposal, why do you put stem cell research language in there? Uh, Brad Kutcher, uh, Brad Kutcher, our guest. Brad, uh, in terms of full disclosure, are you working for the little tobacco companies? I, I am not. I am not. You, you are not. You have, what is your connection to all of this? Uh, well, I, I work with a committee called We Deserve Better, uh, which is a c committee, a political committee, which is opposing this measure, among other things. And so that's my connection with it. And you have no connection with Little Tobacco or Big Tobacco? No, I, I do not. I, have, I do represent uh, one not-for-profit corporation that has advocated some on this issue in the legislature, but not at the ballot box. All right. Uh, Brad, can you hold on through the break? Sure. All right. Mm -hmm. we got sure. a lot more to get to because that was one smoking proposal. There's another one. I want you to get your thoughts on that, and we're going to talk more about sure. this. Because in the fall, the state of Missouri has two 
Uh, ballot initiatives to raise taxes on cigarettes, something the state's been trying to do for years, has never been able to do it. It's failed numerous different times. Now the tobacco company is funding this ballot initiative to change the Constitution to put a 60 cents per tax on each pack of cigarettes. What's the catch? That's what we're talking about. 922 here, Big 550 KTRS. Window World Windows, ladies and gentlemen, for all of your window needs. Window World Windows, 314-993-1800, 314-993-1800. Now, Window World Windows, ladies and gentlemen, they come with a lifetime warranty that covers all the parts, glass breakage, as well as labor. Window World Windows come with a good housekeeping seal of approval. They also come with the uh, McGraw-Millhaven seal of approval. Window World has come out a couple of times in uh, my old house, and, um, well, they did me right numerous times. Uh, the windows, first of all, were great. They wrapped the windows. The replacement windows were fantastic. They were energy efficient. You could clean them. They were great. They added value to the home, and it stopped all the leaking. Window World Windows, for all of your window needs. Why would you go anywhere else when you have great company, you have a great uh, price, and you have the reputation? Window World Windows. You're not going to find anyone better. Call them today for all of your window needs. 314-993-1800. It's not just windows, but it's doors and siding and soffits and sliding glass doors and entry doors and everything else. Window World. 314-993-1800 or windowworld.com. This is McGraw Live on KPLR 11.2, stltoday.com, and the Big 550 KTRS. Here we are in the midst of a St. Louis summer. How is your air conditioning working? Well, if it's working overtime to get the optimal temperature for you, maybe it's time to call Premier Heating and Cooling. They can come out and do a quick check on your system to make sure it's operating properly in this St. Louis summer heat. Now is the best time to call Premier Heating and Cooling to make sure it is ready for this summertime. Ask about their maintenance agreements. Premier Heating and Cooling is a member of the Better Business Bureau. They have a high referral rate. The majority of them are new customers and referred by current customers. Call Premier Heating and Cooling to ask about utility rebates that may be available as well. Besides making sure your air conditioning is working properly, have you considered your indoor air quality? Do you suffer from allergies? Oh, gesundheit. They can help you with that too. So visit Premier Heating and Cooling. Give them a call at 636-916-1122 or online at premierheatingcooling.net. It is Premier Heating and Cooling, at your service 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Each franchise, independently owned and operated, offer good on selected product at participating franchises only. Some restrictions may apply. Ask for details. You're going to love this house. It just came on the market, and it's gorgeous inside. Here we are. Oh my gosh, look at this room. The window coverings are stunning. It's straight out of a magazine. Isn't it incredible? The best part? They didn't even hire a decorator. Budget Blinds did it all. Budget Blinds? Yep, Budget Blinds. They'll give you a free in-home consultation, do all the measuring and installation, and give you the best warranty in the industry. I'll take it. The house? No, the number for Budget Blinds. Right now, it's the biggest sale of the year at Budget Blinds. Call now to schedule your free in-home consultation and receive incredible savings, promotions, and upgrades, including free invisible tilt on shutters. There's never been a better time to get the decor of your dreams. But hurry, the biggest sale of the year ends soon. Call your locally owned Budget Blinds. 1-800-370-2717. That's 1-800-370-2717. 1-800-370-2717. Whoa. This is Elmer, <laughs> who's still hunting a certain rabbit. That wascally wabbit? He should attend the Missouri Arms Collectors Association's 81st Gun Show in St. Charles at 1410 South 5th Street, Friday through Sunday, with hundreds of tables of guns, knives, military, ammo, antique, and historical firearms. Admission is 7 bucks. Parking is free. Free? Yes, free. <coughs> I mean free. For directions and information, go to MissouriArms.com, and you might be able to finally get that wascally wabbit. The Whippic. Hi, this is Mike Kelly. When I'm looking to send flowers to a loved one for a birthday, anniversary, or that special occasion, I call my friends at Walter Knoll Florist. Walter Knoll is family-owned and operated and offers custom designs by expert designers, a huge inventory and selection that only the largest florist can offer with quality and care that no grow. Hey, I'll forward it to you guys as soon as I get more details, but there's a flash flood warning now for Monroe and St. Clair counties until about 1 o'clock. Monroe and St. Clair counties in Illinois until about 1. 83. McGraw, live in the morning on KTRX. Hey, we're just getting word that there is a uh, flash flood warning in effect until 1 o'clock for Monroe counties and St. Clair counties in southern Illinois. So 
Monroe County and St. Clair counties, you are under a flash flood uh, warning until 1 o'clock. Our guest this hour, Brad uh, Ketcher, is a local attorney, and he's involved in these two tobacco initiatives, um, or at least uh, is giving us his point of view on these things. Brad, we were talking in the last segment about the, the bigger one. Now, the smaller one, what's the story with the smaller one? Well, it's a uh, proposition, so it doesn't uh, amend our Constitution. It does it through statute. Uh, it has a 23 cent per pack increase in the tobacco tax that's phased in over, over several years. Um, it also has a small 5% tax on other tobacco products, things like, um, loose tobacco, roll your own type tobacco, pipe tobacco, that sort of thing. Um, and the, the resources from that tax are used for transportation infrastructure. The other point I think that folks should be aware of is that is if a additional tobacco tax comes along after this one passes, it is repealed. So it sort of disappears if other tax proposals come along after the fact. That's for this smaller one. The smaller one. Now, who's pushing the smaller one? This one is pushed uh, largely by the convenience stores and some small tobacco companies. Uh, There may be some other folks that I'm not aware of who are supporting it. I, I assume some uh, folks who care about transportation infrastructure are also supporting it. Because that's uh, where the money is going. That's where the money is going, right. In and this, we do have a pro- yeah, g- go ahead. Uh, the, this 23 cents per tax phase in over a number of years, that's going to go towards bridges and roads and funding of in- critical infrastructure. That's right. It generates about $100 million a year when fully implemented to for for that purpose, for roads and bridges and transportation infrastructure. Oh, gotcha. Why, it, why would... Why would the Missouri Convenience Store Association be in favor of this? They were against all the other tax proposals to raise taxes on cigarettes. Right. That's a good question, and I'd, I'd encourage you to ask them that directly when you get a chance. But uh, obviously they they um, they don't support the much larger tax increase. They don't support some of the other provisions um, in that larger tax increase. And I think they probably put this out as an alternative for folks to take a look at. Um, now, it's been said to me that Little Tobacco is also pushing this. I never knew there was a Little Tobacco, but but is there Little Tobacco pushing this one as opposed to the Big Tobacco pushing the other one? I think that that, that is the case, and I think um, you know Little Tobacco tends to be you know sort of a term you know term of art, but uh, tends to be newer tobacco companies that were not in existence at the time of the the big master settlement, the big statewide. Uh, multi-state uh, tobacco settlement back in the late 90s, the newer, smaller tobacco companies, I think is the way most people define little tobacco. Is there Are there any other nuanced um, positions in this uh, amendment, whereas the, the gag orders and, and things of the like or stem cell or anything yeah. else that's a, of interest? Yeah, not that I'm aware of. Not, not that I'm aware of. And I, I've not studied this one as closely, but I think it's a fairly straightforward proposal where it um, puts a tax in place, dedicates it to to transportation infrastructure, and then says, look, if, if other tobacco taxes come along, this one goes away. I yeah. think that's pretty much what's there. Now, the smaller one sued the bigger one to get off well, the ballot? Uh, yeah, there is, there is litigation going on. There's a number of lawsuits. It's not just the tobacco companies um, that are fighting in the, in the lawsuits. There's also folks who care about stem cell research, uh, folks who care about education who are also litigating. But, but what occurred here is on the, on the big tobacco tax, uh, there was uh, there was a problem with the ballot language on that because one of the things about this proposal, which is surprising, is it has essentially an automatic increase every year in the in the level of the tax, and that was not evident in the ballot language. Um, and there was litigation over that. Ultimately, the courts decided that you know what voters need to know that this tax goes up year after year, year in year out, without a second vote of the people. And so the the ballot language was changed. The thing under Missouri law is if you did not, did not circulate your proposal with that language included, the official ballot language included, then those signatures on that proposal shouldn't count because the voters who signed it didn't, weren't aware uh, of that important fact. And so there's litigation going on right now. It, some of it will be dealt with uh, as early as this week in Jefferson City to determine whether this larger tobacco tax will actually appear on the ballot. So Jason Kander, the Secretary of State, who also has to be running for uh, Senate, he affirmed that this the, the signatures were enough and that from his end, uh, he has certified the signatures and there are enough to go on the ballot. But he's also said, am I correct, that depending on these lawsuits, I might take one of these off the ballot. 
Yeah, I think he's acknowledged that that ultimately a court will, is going to decide this issue, and so he'll, you know, he will um, he'll wait for that court order one way or the other, and he'll follow the directive of the court. Brad Ketcher, what a, I've heard, I've read stories, heard stories that if both pass, what happens if both pass? Haven't there, there been court decisions on that if both <laughs> pass? Well, uh, I mean, it's a good question. I think in general, constitutional amendments trump uh, statutes. So the larger tobacco tax goes into our Constitution, along with all that language. It lasts there forever. Um, the statutes, you know, statutes tend to be trumped by uh, constitutional amendments, although what would have to happen is a court would have to sort through all that and see if there's actual conflict between the two measures. And so this is likely to be tied up in litigation for years and years about which language controls and such th- and things along those lines. Yeah, I want to make sure so I don't get yelled at. Uh, Brad, you are very much against the big tobacco tax increase, correct? That is correct, yeah. Okay, and you're working specifically uh, to, to defeat that measure? That is correct. Okay, and you have no connection with the smaller tobacco? I do, I do not. I'm okay. not working for or against that measure. So let's go back to, to the big one for just a second. Sure. because. Um, as it's been explained to me, and, and as you've said, it will chip away at some of those stem cell protections that were passed as a constitutional amendment in 2006. It seems like there will be two competing constitutional amendments, one saying one thing, one saying another when it comes to this stem cell issue. So what happens then? Well, I think that's that is a lot of the concern among the among the research community that when you have uh, a second measure that comes along and and amends language that touches the stem cell amendment, you know, what's that mean for that for those patient protections and research protections in the stem cell amendment? And at the end of the day, only a court can sort that out, and you never know how that how that will play out. And I think that's why there's such the deep concern of you know why when you're trying to do early childhood education do you have stem cell language in here? Why do you have abortion language in here? There's lots of, there's lots of things in here that make, make really zero sense. Um, but many people are very focused on the, on the implications for medical research and life-saving cures. I don't understand how they can put a, something in as an amendment to the Constitution that says an elected official or a state, what, what was it, a state a uh, worker cannot cannot explain to people how bad smoking is for people. Well, yeah, I mean, it, basically, it says that it, you know, if, if if any of this mo- money touches your agency, you know, if you're the Department of Health or you're a local Department of Health, if any of this money touches your agency, there's a gag order in place that you can't you can't do a couple things. You can't do research into the impacts of smoking, even on young kids, which is what this is supposed to be about, um, and you can't advocate for any kind of stricter tobacco control measures. So it's essentially a gag order, and it's a it's just a blatant goodie for the tobacco companies. I mean, how is wrong. that? How is that? How is that legal <laughs> that, that you can you can pass something that says you're not allowed to advocate for better public policy? Uh, you know, it's it's it, there are probably some very serious First Amendment issues there, uh, but it's in there, and so we've got to you know we. We can't fix their problems for them. It's in there, and so I think what folks need to do is vote this down if they have concerns about that kind of language. Yeah. Uh, but again, your big tobacco has put in when, when it's all said and done eight million dollars to raise their ticket to, to raise the uh, the tax on a pack of cigarettes sixty dollars sixty cents more. Uh, that's right. In some cases, a dollar twenty seven more. Explain that difference. What's a dollar twenty seven more? Well, the dollar twenty seven is uh, in addition to the core tobacco tax. There's also a sixty seven cent per pack uh, tax on these smaller tobacco company cigarettes. And so for those types of cigarettes, you're going to end up with a dollar twenty-seven. The other thing about that particular part is it goes up every year, year in, year out, uh, without a second vote of the people. You know, one of, one of the hallmarks of Missouri law is that tax increases go to vote of the people. And what this proposal does is, uh, yeah, the, the initial tax is approved, but then after year in and year out, it goes up, and uh, which is a real, a real oddity in Missouri government, and uh, is going to just is going to increase that tax over time to some very substantial levels. So hold on a second. You're saying that there are some packs of cigarettes that will only get a 60-cent tax right. per pack, and there are some cigarettes that will get a dollar twenty something a pack more? That's right. That's right. The, 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 the big tobacco company cigarettes will get the 60-cent per pack increase, and the, for the, the little tobacco companies, the smaller, newer tobacco companies, will get a dollar twenty seven. An increase, and that increase will go up over time. It will it will compound year in and year out. Uh, the other tax will not. 
That's like saying, just, just, just so we understand, is that like saying schnooks puts a whole bunch of money in to put a constitutional amendment to only tax themselves a penny, but will tax Deerberg's 10 cents? Uh, that's a, that, is a, that is the proper analogy. What, 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 what brands constitute little tobacco? Is that well, like... let's see. I'm not an expert on that, but it, uh, I, I, one I've heard is Cheyenne. I think that's one of the So, uh, so the smaller yeah. off-name brand. Smaller, I think that's right. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Not a, I'm not an expert on all the tobacco brands, but that's one I've heard. Right, but like the big ones like Marlboro and Winston-Salem and uh, Palm, uh, whatever, Palm All Reds mm-hmm. or whatever, those are, those are the big tobacco companies, the that ones we yeah. sort of know about. All right. Um, Brad, anything else I haven't asked you about that is of interest? Well, look, I think I think voters just need to study this measure, and they, you know they may have some sympathy with the early childhood education issue, but when you really dig into this thing, there is a lot to be concerned about. So, and and what needs to happen is these folks need to start from scratch. With if they want to fund early childhood, they need to start from scratch and try again. Get rid of this stem cell language. Get rid of this diversion of public funds from public education language. Uh, get rid of all the gag orders and the pro tobacco provisions, and try again. This is not the right proposal for Missouri. Brad, a number of, of big organizations have come out against this tobacco tax. That's right. It's, it's an odd, co- it's a very interesting and diverse coalition. It's everybody from the American Cancer Society, American Heart Association, uh, American Lung Association, you know, your core public health groups, uh, to public education advocates, the Missouri National Education Association, the Missouri Retired Teachers. Um, a number of groups have come out against it. And then on the, on the medical science side, you've got Washington University here in St. Louis. Uh, you've got M- Missouri Bio. Uh, you've got uh, Bio St. Louis, um, a, number of the, a number of the research institutions. Uh, and even, on the, even folks on the conservative side um, who are concerned either about the, the size of the tobacco tax increase, uh, the inclusion of things like abortion language in the measure, which is not something we haven't talked about much, but uh, you know, another another uh, novelty item. Why would you include abortion language in an early childhood education proposal? But a conservative group like the Concerned Women of America has concern about that issue. Brad Ketcher, I'm sure we'll be talking between now and Election Day. Thanks for checking in. Sure. Thank you. Seven. Uh, check that. Nine thirty-nine. Big five fifty.